So Forza Horizon 5 just came out, and I don't think I've played a racing game since like Forza 1. The reviews are overall really good though, 73%, and would be higher, but apparently there's a lot of bugs, and I think netcode means like online issues. Yeah, there's like online like multiplayer stuff, and this guy up here is saying pretty much the same thing. It's difficult to play with your friends, but we don't have any friends, so that's fine. And yeah, even his negative review is saying it's the best Forza Horizon game ever, which I mean, I guess there's only five Forza Horizon games, and you would think it would be the best one because it's the newest one, so that's not really saying a whole lot, I guess. You also know the game's got to be good when a DLC for $2.99 has positive reviews that's basically just kind of a map hack. All this $2.99 DLC does is show you where the well-hidden bonus boards or the barn finds are. You can pay $2.99 to reveal the location of these. And people are just eating this crap up, like positive reviews, positive... No one is being negative about this. It is kind of weird that the game just launched and already has this much DLC. Like, I'm not sure if I have to get the car pass, which gives you 42 extra cars at one low price, which, I mean, that would be a low price if those are real cars. As a bonus, you also get eight Formula Drift cars to get you started. And yeah, they're going pretty hard with the monetization here. We got the standard, the deluxe, and premium edition. and doesn't actually even really tell you what these are. So according to the site, the deluxe edition does not offer up much more than the standard edition. It just gives you some extra cars. And only eight of them are available right away. I don't really know what these extra cars are going to give you. Like, are they going to give you an in-game advantage? Also, we got the premium edition, which costs 100 bucks, which grants you access to the game four days earlier, but the game's already released, so we don't care about that. It gives you all the other content available in deluxe edition which apparently wasn't much more than the base. And it contains a welcome pack, VIP membership, and the first two expansions. Okay, we don't really care about that too much. So yeah, it's settled. We'll just go for the standard edition plus a map pack, and then I might buy some more stuff later on if needed. Sometimes you just have to let go and enjoy the ride. How did he steer that or know he wasn't just gonna crash into like the side of the mountain? That's what I don't understand. Like, okay, dude. Okay, that's the actual track. Like, come on. You can't actually be serious. <laughs> this is just how they drop in. They just drop in on a parachute that is uncontrollable by the looks of it. It doesn't look like it's actually controllable. So either they've done this a million times and they know the exact trajectory and they have calculated the wind, or there's a bunch of bullshit. For the eye of the storm. Fuck it, dude. Let's just go fast. Through the storm. Like, who gives a shit, right? But yeah, I got dropped in by that plane on five different cars, and uh, I don't really know how I got back into it. You can't just type the letter to edit your license plate. Like, you have to actually cycle through every letter. This is what console players have to deal with, I guess. I know, Manches. Come on, you know I can't let you use that. Hey, 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 the cargo doors are opening. You want me to shut this? Oh, that was the plan? It just kind of dawned on me, like, what is the point of the plane? Like, it's kind of sick to see a plane. Okay. I guess that's the point of the plan. Whoa, they might be dead. Okay, I might be dead. It was me or them. One of us had to go, basically. What's nice about these motorcycle guys is they don't go too far ahead of you. So you don't miss their stunts. Like, they slow down if you F up too bad, I think. They seem very aware of, like, how hard I've crashed multiple times. I want to run into one and see what happens. It's my new goal for this race is I want to run into one of these motorcycle guys. He's actually just barreling shit over like on purpose it seems like. Yeah, it's gotta be. Oh. Oh my god, where's my wingsuit? Wait, can I jump? Out of the car into a wingsuit? No. That'd be sick though. How's this guy gonna land with his wingsuit? Oh, okay. Well, I didn't get to hit one of the dudes, but um, I did finish. First, actually, I did the hardest difficulty, too. As a thank you from Horizon, you can keep the car. Well, I mean, there's not much left of it, to be honest. I crashed it many times. So thanks, but no thanks. You can have it back. Now, how about some Foo Fighters? How about no Foo Fighters? Because that is going to get my video claimed. Because if there's a clip of a song in a 30-minute or 10-minute video, that guy's fucking dead. You can use your skill point here to unlock perks. Did I just level up after hitting that guy or something? I think I just leveled up after ending that guy. Okay, so when it comes to perks, I think I have to start with this one. 
Yeah, and then I can unlock adjacent perks, which I don't know what these do yet. I don't know which one sounds more exciting. 100 miles per hour in the middle of a sandstorm or going antiquing to find a little car. Roger that. I'll let Alejandra know you can help her later. Yeah, we're not going to help her later find her old car. Haley's asked for pictures of all the cars at the festival. It's called Horizon Promo. And obviously, we want action shots. Fast ones. I can do fast. Let's go. Like, I thought we were supposed to be racing here, not trying to take pictures in dust storms. Take a photo deep inside the dust storm. Like, that does not sound like a cool mission. And it, like, the score keeps popping up, like, ultimate air. Every time I drift, I'm getting points. But, like, for what? This is an awesome mission, dude. Photo challenge complete. So I got three stars for taking the photo in one minute, 30 seconds. It doesn't say anything about my score mattering though. So I don't know if the score that I accumulated while going there actually did anything. I think it should have been like, take it in a certain amount of time with a certain amount of score for three stars or whatever, you know? Okay, so we got more missions to choose from, which I guess this is just like the campaign. I'm not really interested in the campaign as much as I am interested in like a uh, career mode or something where like you start from nothing and then, you know, you kind of build up your wealth and like you start upgrading your cars and stuff like that. I also just revealed the treasure map and a bunch of things just popped up on the map. They say XP, but XP for what though? So I have four cars and I'm trying to auction off three of them. I'm not sure if like other players have to buy them and they have to wait, but I think it'd be cool to use all that money to upgrade this car to be like the ultimate car. We have 31,000 credits, which I'm not sure how you gain credits. I'm guessing it's just by doing things. And if I get a race clutch, it says that it's going to upgrade my stats, but it doesn't say by how much. It says it's going to lower my off-roading though, which is kind of bad. I've been doing a lot of that. I guess the upgrade was just so small that it wasn't really affecting things because like we can see here that this upgrade for 3000 is actually boosting the stats by 0.1 and the other stuff by I guess not even enough to get 0.1. So these upgrades are really not doing much basically. Like getting 0.1 in a stat does not really excite me too much but we'll just upgrade anyways for 3k. So I put these cars up in the auction house yesterday and I think it's like a real player auction house where like other players can buy your cars. You can buy cars with money so it's basically pay to win I guess. I put these up for one hour on accident and then when I realized that you can change the time, I changed this one up to 24 hours. And this is my epic car, I guess. I thought it might sell for a lot, but no one's buying it. If I search on the auction house, I could find a really crappy Jeep and I could try to race on that. That might be kind of interesting. This one has a Supreme sticker on it, so we could race in style. This one's got an anime girl on it. Okay, that's me. Nice. I got the anime waifu car. So I'm looking for a mission that's more off-roading focused, like the trailblazer maybe off-roading perhaps, or danger sign. See that one. Apparently there's other players on my map. I guess this is all the players that are playing the game right now. XXX salty nuts XXX. You'd think for a new game there'd be more people playing. Looks like there's just two people online right now. But yeah, I want to go down to this danger sign, but I think it's kind of far. I have to drive there in this stupid Jeep though, which is going to take a while, I think. This thing sucks. Wait, let's upgrade it first, actually. Let's just do auto upgrade and let's see what we get here. It says auto upgrade to a specific class, I think. Like we're trying to make this Jeep into one of these classes. I think that's what we're doing. It's gonna take 55,000 credits to give it quite a bit more horsepower. Okay, let's turn it into a B class then for 47,000 credits. Okay, A class for 29,000. Oh, I actually had that too before I bought this stupid Jeep. It looks like anything we do for it though is gonna increase the stats. We actually lose stats, but we can increase some stats. Yeah, this is too confusing. I think we just gotta wait till we do the automatic upgrade. Oh my god. Do we gotta drive three miles going 72 miles per hour? Oh wait, this Jeep is good at off-roading. Let's just do that. It says we're getting further and further away, but I don't think that's the case. I think we're getting closer. Oh yeah, there it just jumped down to 1.8. Oh yeah, we can off-road this. Easy. Yep. That's why I bought this thing. We go through the jungle though is the question. Not that tree. Most trees you can just knock over, but not the big boy ones. We would have had to go all the way around to get here. And uh, yeah, we just took a massive shortcut to get here. Now we gotta go off of this thing. Whoa, Pazool. Just got some air and I did not get much air there. He's probably dead by the way, that is not a good uh, it's not a good look. Okay, well, here we go. Let's see what this thing's got. 200 feet. How was that? Not, bad. not bad, she said. Okay, so obviously it wasn't the right mission, but we got a race over here that looks like it's kind of off-road. Okay, so I just realized this Ford Bronco actually has more off-roading and more everything than the Jeep. It's kind of sad. Apparently these are all real people. Also, I just had the realization that you have to hit checkpoints, so you can't just like cut across the track. I thought originally that was going to be my plan. 
So, uh, yeah, we're pretty screwed with the Jeep. I think we're just gonna retire that thing. It pretty much has no hope. It has like 60 horsepower, and these cars have like 400, I think, or something. Or maybe even like 600, I don't know, but... If you do the math on it, it just doesn't seem like 60 can compete. I also don't think these are real people. I think this is like maybe their best times or something that I'm competing with. Because I was able to start this pretty much instantly. It wasn't like I had to wait for a bunch of people to join. I think that's just like AI. So I was getting kind of owned with this Bronco. The handling felt really bad. It's only 3.4 handling. I want to try maybe like the Stingray Coupe with 7.8 handling, but it's got much worse off-road. This thing has worse off-road as well. And this thing, like if you look at the stats, like it just sucks overall. There's nothing good about it. That was a fat waste of like 13k. Let's try the Stingray Coupe because even though it has 0.3 less speed than the Supra, everything else on it looks way better. Oh, so I upgraded the car. Now everyone else gets car upgrades as well. Uh, I see. Dude, look at my, how bad my car is. Like, I'm so far behind. I started in last, dude. Okay, restart. Each car has a different class, I guess, and if you use higher class cars, then you're gonna compete with higher class cars. I guess that's how it is. Do also keep in mind, I put the difficulty on unbeatable. I think that might be why. You can change all these other things too. Like I can make it manual shifting. I guess this gives more credits if you win. My old car used to be a manual. I feel like I could do it, but let's just stick with automatic shifting for now because you only get a 15% bonus. Doesn't seem like it's all that worth. Other than the difficulty being higher, it gives you more credits as well. I just kind of had the realization that the reason why there's probably no chance that I can beat these other cars is because I'm playing on unbeatable and I've not upgraded this car at all. Although what if I get like the perfect line? And it's not even really gonna matter, I think. I felt like that was really good. And I don't think it's even gonna matter. I don't think I can beat unbeatable. So the Stingray that I was just driving is S1 class. I think like A is worse. And obviously like D is really bad. Like maybe I should try the Jeep actually. I just wish I had upgraded it. Yeah, here we go. We're competing with people that have basically the same car as me. Yeah, this is much more like it. I will say I could have upgraded some parts of the Jeep without improving its class. I think the automatic upgrades will just improve its class like up to, I don't know, like B or something or C. That's what it was telling me to do. Yeah, this is much more doable. And if I just upgraded some parts to it, like maybe increase the speed a bit for like less off-roading, Whoa, this thing is actually really easy to uh, steer. It's not that bad though, like I'm at least in 11th position and I'm about to actually pass these guys up, I think, momentarily. Oh, uh, hitting that barrel actually sucked, but yeah, I'm about to pass two cars. This is on the hardest difficulty too, like this is actually way easier. Looks like this might be the meta here. Jeep meta, I'm in eighth place. And I tried it on another car, the other off-roading car. And I was able to get to like 10th place, but it's so much easier. What the heck? Yeah, we're in 7th place now. It's just that the 6th place car and everything in front of that is way ahead. So I don't think we win this one. Oh yeah, I can't even see them on this big stretch here. Like, they are so far ahead. I don't know what they did to their Jeeps. Ooh, that could be a nice shortcut actually. There's not many places where you can kind of shortcut because of the checkpoints and how close they are together, but that might have actually been a really good shortcut. Okay, before I lower difficulty, I'm gonna try the Supra, which is an A-class. It's obviously not as good as my S1. And yeah, you can already see, like, these guys have their cars tuned up, or, like, they have some upgrades that are boosting out their speed, I think. So unless I'm just way better than them, there's it's hopeless. If I lower the difficulty of the other cars down to average, but I boost the driving assist presets up to ultimate, I actually get around the same amount of credits or like even more, but I have to do manual shifting now. I don't know how to do that. Okay, here we go. So once we get in the red line, we got to shift, right? That's how this works. I'm still not really beating these guys, which I thought they'd be way crappier. But it looks like I'm topped out at uh, number three. Okay, wait, yeah, this is way easier. Holy cow, these guys suck so bad. I'm like almost in first, actually. Yeah, this is gonna give me way more credits. Yeah, here we go. Almost in first. Yep, I'm first. Easy peasy. This is actually so easy with the Jeep because you only have to use three gears. It doesn't have four uh, gears or whatever. I actually forget what the term is for like how many times you have to shift, but yeah, you only have to shift three times with this thing. Whereas like you have to shift way more times with faster cars. So yeah, this is so easy. 
I'm just cruising. I don't have to go for shortcuts or anything. I'm position one like almost instantly. So what that means is I could actually buff up the difficulty of the other cars and I could get even more credits for winning. That's actually pretty funny. Yeah, as you can see, like I'm redlining, but that's the max speed of this Jeep. Like I can't shift it anymore. I'm trying to shift. I could downshift down to two, but that's going to be very bad. Pretty sure you never want to downshift when you're redlining in a real car. I don't think it lets you. Like I think it makes an awful noise. I can't remember one of my friends did that in my car before. Every time. Ooh, here we go. Wheel spin. White biker jacket. Sweet. I don't know if you're supposed to let it get in the red at all, or like if you're let it, supposed to let it get deeper into the red, or how that works exactly. I always just used to shift before it got in the red on my car. Right, here we go. We're going to do this thing again. I think we're going to get a lot more air. And we're probably going to die here. Yeah, I think we're done. Shift. Got two stars from that. I guess you can do better. So we got a bunch of credits for winning that race and we can auto upgrade the Jeep, but if we do, it's gonna increase our amount of points of the class, I guess. It's still gonna be a D class, but it's gonna be way more points. And so I think it's gonna buff up the difficulty of other drivers, but maybe it's worth. I mean, we won't really know until we try. So let's pimp this thing out. So here's the new stats of the Jeep. I'm seeing our speed went up by one, handling went up by 1.1, acceleration by 0.7. Launch actually went way down. I don't know if that's bad. We got a lot more braking and we lost some off roading ability. I'm also thinking maybe we could try to buff up the difficulty of opponents by, I don't know, like a couple difficulty levels. Unbeatable was where I was just getting owned earlier. I mean, we could try it though. It's still gonna be really easy to shift this thing, but we are gonna be able to shift it more maybe. Oh, we're getting passed up by this dude. That's not a good sign. Although our launch is really bad and I think that means our speed at the very start, but our high end speed I think is better. So once we get into like these long situations, uh, yeah, I don't know about unbeatable to be honest. I mean, I'll try. But uh, I think unbeatable might be unbeatable for this sheep. Can I like use one of these guys as like, yeah, there we go. I gotta shift way down when that happens. Yeah, I'm just getting passed out by these dudes. Like, I don't think this is happening. I do feel like I was kind of close though. Like maybe we try to bump it down to maybe even pro. Let's try pro. I do find it a little bit disturbing that I'm the only crappy Jeep here. Like everyone else is using better cars, it seems like. Yeah, I'm kind of just getting passed up by cars that were behind me. Although once we get into these straight runs, I feel like I can compete. Like I'm kind of gaining speed here. Although, eh, I don't know about that. Let's just run to these cars. Use them as a, uh, yep, that's the play. It actually gained me a lot just now for doing that. Use this guy, yep, thank you. Use them as a guardrail. I think even with using the other cars as a guardrail there, even though it did boost me like six positions, I don't think it's gonna be enough. Like I think I'm gonna end six here no matter what, so maybe we just restart and lower difficulty again. All right, this time we'll lower it down to expert and we'll still get 80% bonus credits. I wonder if since we're going against better cars, if this is actually harder, like if it would be more doable if I was using the crappier uh, Jeep. Cause yeah, I'm seventh out of 12 with lower difficulty. I didn't get that amazing start where I used all those cars as like a sideboard, but it just doesn't really seem possible in the harder difficulty against these harder cars. Like maybe we buy another crappy Jeep. We have enough credits for it. This Jeep has the same stats from the one I bought originally, but it has 0.1 more handling. This one as well also has 0.1 more handling and that's it. And so does this one. I guess the one I bought just sucked. Let's just buy this one. Okay, so with the new crappy truck, we're gonna retry this race on the difficulty below the hardest. It's pro, which is one below unbeatable. And we're getting 90% bonus credits for winning this. And yeah, this is already feeling easier. It's kind of weird that they do the system like this because it seems like what's the point of actually upgrading your car? You're just gonna get harder opponents. Well, I'm kind of bottoming out here, which is not great. Although it does seem like you want less top speed and more, I forget what the stat is, but it's like, oh yeah, let's see. Oh, when I hit the checkpoint, I think I did. Okay. You want more acceleration, it feels like. Like you wanna be able to gain more speed from zero in a race like this because there's not a lot of straight situations where you're just going full speed in a straight line. So different tracks, I think, are like, you kind of want different cars for different tracks, which is pretty obvious. Like there's certain ones that are more off-roady, but even more so than that, with some tracks that don't have long straightaways, you want cars that are gonna be better around turns, I guess. But yeah, there's no hope for this one. We're in 10th. We're gonna lower it down to experts so we get 80% bonus credits. I think it is in my best interest to go off-road whenever I can. So like even right here. 
it's definitely possibly my best interest to just straight up off-road just to cut like any small corner because i only lost like one mile per hour speed there and, like right here is where we uh get a lot of time if we can do this right yeah that was perfect like almost right here as well yep thank you for helping me out oh yeah these things suck maybe i could have done one difficulty higher even I'm gonna be first momentarily, I think. Especially if I do this part right, and I use the first place as, oh, well, maybe second place. Yeah, that was good. Oh yeah, no, oh, don't spin out. Okay, we're in second now. Well, maybe I couldn't be at one difficulty higher. First place is now way ahead, and I really don't know what to do to catch up to him. Okay, we're going in same difficulty, and the main thing is I gotta be able to get to first place off of this first initial crash turn. Yeah, here we go, this is the one. We gotta get the perfect pace. Oh, I didn't hit the checkpoint, I think. Did I miss the checkpoint? No, I actually hit it. Okay, I'm actually pretty close to first place. I think I got this. I don't know what happened last time, why first place was so good. But uh, this dude is not nearly as good, I think. Yep. Okay, this was so easy this time. What happened? Why was the last time so difficult? Okay, maybe it's not that easy. Shift down to one, please. No, we're going to reverse. No. I wish I had the rewind feature enabled. I'm pretty sure I could just reround that mistake and actually it does not lower the amount of credits that you get for some reason using that feature which one would think that you would get less credits by using a feature that can make the track easier but uh, I guess not. I've never actually used the rewind feature but I'm guessing if you F up it will just rewind back like 10 seconds or something. But yeah first turn yet again. Down Ranger was the dude who was winning last time. Oh that was amazing I'm first place off of that. Yep, there it is. Yeah, playing without drive lines I think does increase the difficulty, but it still shows you when to break, so it's actually like what's the point of the drive lines? Oh god. I think that was okay. Well, it wasn't really that good. The first place dude is uh well that's me actually. I'm about to not be first place. The guy is right on my butt. I have to not mess this one up. That was pretty good, I think. Uh, I'm gonna stay ahead of this guy. He's like literally on me. I'm actually beating him pretty good now. He's not that close. And already finish. Let's manually upgrade this thing to try to increase, I guess, the speed and maybe like lower the off-roading. We can upgrade the transmission to increase the speed by 0.4, but we lose quite a bit of launch, only 0.1 acceleration. These upgrades really don't seem like they're doing that much. Like we're getting 0.1 extra launch for upgrading this drive line, but it is also gonna increase the value of the Jeep as well up to 201, which is not much. I guess we just do it. It's also gonna lower the weight, which might be good. We can upgrade the transmission to a seven speed, which the one we have right now, I think is like a three speed. That might be worth to do it's actually gonna lower the value too kind of want to see what happens if we get a seven speed transmission though is that gonna increase our speed is that gonna allow us to go faster overall if we remove these side skirts we gain a bunch of stats actually we just lose a little bit of handling like everything else goes up except for the handling might as well just do that i also found us a new and improved anime waifu which i don't think cost me anything to apply that yeah so far things are not looking very good here we're in ninth place and we're getting past yeah this is not gonna work i think okay, i was expert we're gonna bump it down to highly skilled which is still gonna give us 75 percent credits it's five percent more than the difficulty we just want to race at so maybe if we can win at this difficulty those upgrades would have been worth yeah no i think it's just not happening uh back down lower difficulty maybe? holy hell we barely even these guys aren't even making that jump. We suck so bad. <laughs> this is like standard for this race. Wait, what? I think I just actually passed some people by doing that. I'm pretty sure this tier of truck was not meant for this racetrack, I guess. Okay, I just went back down to above average. I really don't think the upgrades that we just did are actually helping at all. Like, it seems like we're getting less speed or something, I don't know. Although, I am passing these guys on this turn, like quite a few of these guys. And on that one cliff jump, I'm pretty sure I'll catch back up. Willful Gore, two, six, two, seven, as opposed to unwillful Gore. There we go. <laughs> Bro, it's not meant to be. That's just RNG. That's bad RNG right there. We're dead. I could have rewound. Not anymore though. 
<laughs> All right, well, I lowered the difficulty down to average. We're still getting 65% more credits, I think, because of the harder driving settings. I could actually turn off the thing where it tells you when to brake as well, because I don't usually end up using that, and I just usually end up craning into the wall. Pretty much no matter what, like, I could turn off these lines, and I think that might actually boost our uh, stuff. But yeah, as you can see, we're going way quicker. We're already almost in fifth. And the main thing is I need to get to first before that huge jump. Because I don't want to land on a truck on that jump. And it looks like, yeah, we've already made it here and I'm not in first place. I'm almost in first place. I'm actually going to be close. Let's just go on this side and see if this is going to be the way. <laughs> oh, no, no. Rewind, rewind. <laughs> yeah, even more. Resume from here. Yes. Let's go to the left now. We can hit the exact angle, I guess, with the rewind. Nope, rewind. <laughs> There's a car that's about to land on my head. Okay, resume from here. Let's go to the left more, I guess. These guys had the right idea. Yep. No. No, rewind. Can we rewind? Yeah. I guess you can just infinitely rewind, which is kind of weird, but... Let me just get, get RNG here. That's not it. Let's try to get over to the left side. It feels like the left side is the way to go. As long as I get to the left side, though. Yep. Land it. Uh, it's about as good as we're gonna get, maybe. Nah, we gotta go back. We just gotta get lucky on landing this, though. Like this, and then this has gotta land. Yep. And you go back into first, and then just proceed. That is it right there. That's the pace. This is the run. The winning pace run. This one's hard too. Eh, no, it's not that hard actually. Just downhill. Apparently the cars behind me had a problem with that one though too because uh, they're actually way behind now. Or some like right on my tail. But yeah, I wanted to go back and try that same track using a higher tier car and we're gonna do average. We're using a B class now and I'm not sure if we can get more credits for winning a higher class race because the one we just won was D class, like all the cars were D class. All these cars are gonna be B class though. It's gonna be harder to shift though, I will say. But one thing I've kind of realized, I think as long as you shift whenever you hear the sound of it like kind of bottoming out, if that's even the word, you'll hear like this. As soon as you start to hear that, I think as long as you shift, that's like the most optimal shifting, I think. Oh, this is the wrong race actually, crap. I'll try to win this one too actually though. We're already 17% done. There we go. That was pretty clean. We're catching up to Armando. I could have actually gone through the grass there, I think. There was no checkpoint to hit. I'm like right here, I gotta hit the checkpoint first. Then we can go through the grass, but there's really no need. There we go, Armando. You're gonna be my uh, crash test dummy. Didn't really hit him in the right spot there, but I think we're okay. Oh yeah, he's got a bad uh, pickup or whatever. Or maybe I just hit a really key component of his car. Okay, you can F up with the shifting pretty good, and I'm not really noticing a huge loss of speed. Especially when you're going around corners that require you to brake. If you downshift, you end up losing a bit of speed, but it kind of breaks for you, I think. Pretty sure you can brake using downshifting. But I think it's hard on your transmission or something. Please elaborate on that in the comments if anyone knows. And okay, we actually did gain credits for winning that higher tier race. I think we are at 16k before, I think it was. That's why I like using cars like an off-road. It says 1.3 miles till destination. But that is not going to be the case. It's about to change by quite a bit. 1.4 miles. Just wait for it though. 1.0, 0.5, 800 yards. Yeah, makes traveling around the map a lot easier doing it this way. Oops, I'm messing up my shifting. But yeah, here's the jump on a better car. And yeah, it's a bit different. I was actually about to pass these guys. Like, why'd they all break so much? What are you guys doing? Wussies. Why did they break before hitting that? That makes no sense. Oh no. It was actually pretty close. We're at 97%. Oof. You can see how close the car is behind me. Like, all of them. That was actually really close. We got a wheel spin. I forgot to put my new coat on. But we got a RX 
8 Mazda. This thing's B class. It's 76 points less than the Bronco. So if we were to use this, we'd be driving as crappier cars. It does have quite a bit less handling, acceleration, and off-road though. Only 0.2 more speed. I don't think that's going to be really worth. We can try it out in a new race though. And okay, this track is actually a little bit slippery from what I'm seeing. And yeah, this track was looking pretty difficult. We also have to do three laps. So I decided to go back to this poop box and we're just going to use this. This should be a lot easier. Like as you can see, we're just passing these dudes up on the straightaways mainly, I guess. Okay, I'm already in sixth, fifth, about to be fourth after this thing. If I can not mess this up. Nice. That was okay. We're up to third, second, and we're about to be first momentarily. I wasn't shifting properly. I think I was uh, in second gear for too long. Oh, there we go. Now we're in first, and it's going to be smooth sailing. I'm trying to max out my points here based on my score. I'm not sure if that matters, but like if you drift, that was like a drift. A little bit of wreckage though. Did I hit the thing there? That's kind of a long drift, I guess. Yeah, you see that thing in the middle. Like, I think if we max it out, maybe we get more credits at the end. I'm just trying to drift more because I'm so far ahead of these guys that it doesn't really matter. This is a big drift potential right here. I know I'm in the wrong gear. And take a drift. I don't know. It's okay, I think. And yeah, we got 13k credits off of that. And I think we got more points than I normally get. So I'm not 100% sure, but it does feel like we got more credits for getting more points. All right, well, this whole time I've been gaining, I think it's accolades. And we're now able to do the next mission, which is meeting this dude at a house that I guess is for sale. I guess it's free as well. So... Yeah, I think we'll be doing that in the next episode. If there is going to be a next episode, I'm not sure if a racing game is going to do good on my channel, but uh, yeah, we'll see how people like it. And yeah, thanks for watching.